She holds Interior Architecture Bachelor and in currently, is currently a PhD Fellow and Junior Researcher in Estonian um, Academy of Arts. She has constructed var various scale installations, designed interiors and won several prizes at multiple architecture and planning competitions, as well as published a number of critical essays on sustainable architecture and urbanism since 2015. Believer in inevitable sustainability of architecture, she is one of the key initiators on urbanizing and automating timber architecture in Estonia. She founded the Architectural Office part together with Seem Tuxam in 2015 and was previously trained in Morphosis Architects Los Angeles and in Coop Himmelblau Vienna. She has been an editor of architecture and cultural monthly newspaper Murilet. In 2016, she started an environmental architecture studio in Estonian Academy of Arts and since then is a co-curator of open lecture series and participant in various government-initiated government expert groups. So Silly's keynote is called Protocoling Prototypes or Prototyping Protocols. Welcome. Hi. Hello, everybody. So. I hope you all had uh, coffee and ready for the final stretch. Um, in regards of what we have seen today, um, the migration uh, topic is something that has been quite um, close to me in certain extent, because I was, as you just hear before from my bio, uh, I was f um, almost 10 years abroad, living in uh, Los Angeles and in Vienna, and being um, studying there as well as working for Pritzker Prize offices or experimental architects, then coming back to Estonia, I had a, a big question in my head, like how can I implement the knowledge that I gained and how can I contextualize it in a way that, that would actually fit to the uh, given Estonian uh, environment. So from now, I would uh, like to set it up uh, in a way that my presentation is consisting of three parts. So I would be first discussing why am I doing what I'm doing? And then I would look into how am I doing what I'm doing? And uh, then thirdly, I would be just uh, saying what else I'm doing. So to take off from here. Um, in my work, I have been uh, fascinated about what the bu building consists of. So what are the parts that create the whole or how we can take this whole into parts? And, and while doing this, I'm, um, I'm looking at the, and, and describing the, the protocols of the design, uh, what an architect takes to counter, and I'm also understanding the, the prototyping, the, the output, the physicality of those systems. So in that terms, I'm not really sure if I'm uh, protocoling or prototyping, but what I'm looking at is how to get from uh, there to there, or to start from there and get there. And, uh, and always keeping in mind to bring in back the human scale to architecture and uh, creating this articulation that modulation and panelization could bring us. So that's nothing f new for none of you, right? Um, the social housing projects that, uh, that, created, uh, that came from the urge uh, of uh, migration um, brought in the standardization and also introduced the new living methods. So now, 50 years later, Estonia hasn't uh, got, yeah, since 30s, I think that was the last time when we constructed cities out of timber. Of course, there's a now urge to, to question that, like if what are the materials that we are building our world with? And, and yes, for the longest time now, the timber has uh, reached, again, the large-scale building economy. But as you can see, there's not that much difference between those two pictures. 
So I'm looking at ways of how we can uh, contemporize it, how we can bring back the spatial, like how we can implement the spatial qualities um, and, and re-entering the material library of an architect with wood, but uh, not in a way of what we see here. Maybe more at looking at ways how the young emerging architects, what are their elements and uh, their modules that they're constructing the space. But again, not remaining the pavilion architect as most of us are. So those, um, this formal heterogeneity um, is something that I'm uh, interested in. If you would look into what is contemporary architecture, um, it is rather sculpturesque. Uh, it is, uh, for me, a paper crumbling and, uh, and uh, being obsessed with the uh, first sketch. And take a notice that there's Zaha is running, uh, winning the competition, but there's, uh, most of it is actually Gary in here. So it seems to me that, um, that this uh, neoplastic cystic uh, approach of creating a, a new form, what, um, what Mondrian and Dosberg were talking about in the steel, um, is re was much about reject, uh, rejecting the plasticity of the past. And I think that's something that I'm uh, somewhat looking at. So it's a generational difference. Um, uh, and, um, and I think it's important to think like how we can um, crumble the bolugans instead of the paper and, uh, and then be part of the new generation of uh, emerging architects with the current problems in our hand. As a side note, I have to say I'm not the young generation yet. Um, meaning that the sustainability, the, what we do with our environment, would ask me to take the 42-hour sailing boat to come here from Tallinn. I did not do that. I did not even uh, remain only with a bus, but I'm taking the plane and the bus. So my visit here is 140, yeah, 140 kilos of CO2 emissions that I'm, uh, I'm taking with me to, to be part of this. But I have to admit, it's worth it. Uh, but again, like being the far left is uh, something that to be aimed for, but I think I'm the in-between generation that is still mingling between the old traditions. So how am I doing what I'm doing? I'm developing, I'm, I'm constantly, I've understood that we have to rephrase the production chain of architecture. Projection chain not only in terms of the workflow, how we work, because now, because of the digital tools, we can, uh, architects, we can enter totally new territories that we couldn't before. We can create our own tools. So the hammer is not a hammer anymore. I can create my own hammer. Um, I can uh, tell people how to put things together. Um, and I'm, um, I'm, I'm part of the, the process of uh, fabrication, etc. So, um, our recent project uh, that is uh, in the schematic design, so we're looking at ways how to enter serious construction industry, meaning literally working together with Estonian timber industry that, as you might know, is, uh, is the biggest industry that we have at the moment, as well as we have... Uh, five access CNCs that little people know what to do with, uh, and uh, robotic hands in the industry, but we're still producing those um, maybe rather seen uh, schemes and typologies of architecture. Uh, and also with this idea of entering the, uh, the timber industry, we also need to standardize the, the production or standardize the architecture. But I'm not saying that we need to reduce it into three elements or, or three panels, but I say with the modulation, we can create more flexible and adapt adaptable architecture. So what I was trained in school was um, this chain. 
So from the brief, architect creates a vision. From this vision, the engineer makes it buildable, and then comes the manufacturer uh, to create the building. And what I see in my work is much more about uh, the common platform, the central uh, design development where, uh, where the engineers, architects, and manufacturers sit together and um, insert their information. Uh, manufacturers entering the machine capabilities, the material that is out there, um, the engineering are setting up uh, the, the limitations of what the structure can take. Uh, and then together in a, in a living geometry, not, not finalizing the geometry before we hand it over, but constantly inserting it inside of the common platform, this looping system has uh, generated us a lot of possibilities that we have uh, noticed as advantage for, um, for this kind of production chain. So this common platform um, is something that one could claim that it is uh, the design by committee, that if a committee wants to design a horse, it ends up to be a camel. I'm trying to prove otherwise. For example, the design pylon uh, for the electricity pylon connecting uh, cutting away from a Russian uh, electricity system and connecting the fin, uh, from Finland to through Europe. Um, the competition we won in 2016 was a lot about, uh, that is under construction at the moment, was a lot about putting all the information of the material, the, um, the strength calculations, and then as well as the architectural ambition of the, of the object into a one platform where the geometry was flexible and constantly changing, uh, allowing us in the end, as an architect to figure out um, the, the perfect design for this. Also, when we are working with live geometry, as I just showed, but also we're working with living material. Timber is not finalized product as, uh, as one can uh, imagine, that it, it's reacting to the moisture, it's reacting to the uh, the rooms, environments were settled in, so we are, wor we are also working in, uh, in two parts, meaning that we are defining the part as an as a independent common platform, understanding the details, the joinery, how things get together, and that's feeding back into the whole, like the overall shape of this. So, for example, um, when constructing 2015 Tallinn Architecture Bernale installation, uh, a night before the CNC, we got a phone call from the wood manufacturer that, hey, so it's not going to be 10 by 10 anymore, um, the, the, the lumber, but it's 9.6. And obviously, if you have 350 different parts, this joint's not going to work. But, but that's how the timber is connected. So within a few seconds of having an algorithmic platform, we managed to change the geometry and still... CNC on time, um, getting together an installation with unique pieces and with the, with the working joinery. So I would claim that it's not a horse, uh, it's not a camel what we're getting, it's neither a horse, it's much more of a unicorn, what the common platform uh, brings, brings us. That is much fitter and closer to the architect's initial design as well as the uh, engineers and manufacturers' capabilities. And from that point on, we have been um, designing a lot of uh, installations, for example, for the uh, European uh, Union uh, uh, opening uh, event in the Freedom Square in Tallinn where the whole uh, square was covered with uh, only this one element, one meter long, that could be assembled together as a le Lego uh, and uh, then uh, disassembled. Or looking at in, in a smaller scale when you have four different scales of triangles and the one stick, like what kind of seating, table areas, screen holders, etc. you can generate out of this. Um, and that was shown in a bazaar in Brussels. Or the biggest we have done so far 
Uh, we finalized it in the last December, and that is a four-story height, that means 18 meters height um, installation that uh, is only consisting of those two elements, the tripods and the two pods. So the two pods are there in the endings, so it, in, in that terms, we're, it's not going to grow any further, and the tripod is the, is the structure inside. So all of those members were independent in each other, dealing with the shared forces, but also with the bending moments. So there was, won't anymore be post and beams, but there's, there's actually a, a module, an element can, that can do both of it. And so we constructed the first structure that has no vertical elements. There's no vertical elements in this uh, thing. And, and these are the... These are the 500, um, some of the 500 elements, where then again the joint or the, the node became the most efficient. We're always working with um, Bolling and Groman from uh, Austria on those projects, and they solved the concept design of the joint of like how those elements get together and how to get the preciseness that is necessary um, to, to assemble it. And here you can see the construction uh, construction site that was inside of the atrium of the shopping mall. Um, we still do that in Estonia. We construct shopping malls. Um, and in there, we had those three legs, and we had to lay out the forces. We couldn't uh, be standing on, uh, on feet. So laying it out as much as possible and then putting the nets on it in the end, was was quite of a trick because the building surrounding you was already finished. So constructing something in a 30 meter atrium needed small pieces, pieces that one could carry uh, and uh, set in space. Um, and of course, the lower part uh, we call the blinth uh, was uh, much more of uh, dealing with the uh, continuous surfaces, the, like I call it somatic bodies that um, had, were also uh, modular, but uh, had uh, plants and earth, and they're still in it, uh, and sitting areas. And now the plants have already uh, grown, so the structure becomes a canvas for, uh, uh, for the plants, and the plants are taking it over within um, they s first said one year, but it seems to me it's going to be more of the two years, but there's already some mines that are up in there in 18 meters height. And these structures we have uh, de developed further for car park or actually basically questioning how can we, how maybe the building doesn't have to be any more part of the part of the building structures, but maybe could be much more part of the park that has its seasons and then its changes and difference in one point just being the empty cloud. Another project that we did in Tartu that is also under, uh, under design development at the moment um, is a, a pedestrian bridge and a tunnel. And the idea there was that it, it's some kind of a continuous surface that uh, could bring back the small scale, the human scale, into uh, urban environment uh, by using the wood chips to do that. And of course, the city would say immediately wood chips won't work uh, because they don't last, they get gray, and no one wants to go there. So we said, what if we can um, analyze the sun exposure on each of the chip? Again, that these are the tools available. And then already paint the ones that are going to get more exposure gray, and the ones that would be inside would be then warm and, um, and woody. Um, so that's, that, that worked. Um, and also, like, when, we, when we look at those prototyping methods, um, it's important to try out the machines and the CLT capabilities, for example, in this case, for a private house that... Um, that actually we can, they can claim that they have the machinery, but they might not know how to use it. So that, that prototype there took us, uh, I think it was two weeks of uh, back and forth to figure out how to do the five-axis CNC, and that was the first one in Estonia. 
And also with wood timber industry, we see also the problems because they mostly cut themselves out of, uh, um, th they cut the windows and the uh, uh, doors out of big panels and then there's a lot of leftover material that is quite of a structural one. So in this bus station project, we, we looked at how we can uh, use the industry leftovers and then assemble like the smaller scale stairs and, and seating areas out of it. Uh, and, the, and, the, and the biggest project so far is this uh, four-story apartment building uh, where the, the evaluation of what uh, a one uh, element or one of the module that is going through four stories now can uh, do and provide. Um, and then realizing that, that this kind of... Uh, ever-growing system is actually giving us possibility to have 3.6 meter high ceilings in a, in a small bachelor's pad as we were asked to design. So in a way you have a 40 square meter uh, a room without any divisions but you're, you're still, you, the space is still divided with, uh, with different heights and of course for the client it was, it's a, again a good argument how to, how to sell this by saying that I have a 3.6 meter high ceiling available, uh, apartment available. And, uh, and with, the, with organizing the building, again, this, uh, this creed or the module is, uh, is helping us to also systemize and, and define the, the ever-growing apartments. Ending up uh, with, the, with the proposal like that, that is at the moment in a, uh, waiting for the city approval. And, and I think in, on a facade, it's important to show that when we're constructing a, a timber apartment building, everybody wants to show the timber, but you can't show the timber on a facade. We can get better in tiers by saying that you don't have to cover the timber anymore, but on a facade, you need to create some kind of protection. And that's why we, we did it in a way that from a certain angle, you can still see some wood, but basically we cover it from from uh, any kind of um, w water and rain. And the last thing, what um, I said, like what else I'm doing, because I want to show them the different mediums I have in my hand. So it's not only about having the office or it's not only about doing my, my PhD on this, but it's, uh, it's also a lot about uh, uh, the, the other mediums in my hand. So for, for, first of all, I just want to show that this is our office. So it's, it's quite of a mess. We are constantly testing and playing and producing. Um, it's, it's with my founding partner, Seam. But, um, but there's also more, of course, people involved with it. And uh, when we returned from uh, Vienna, we were even called the Vienna Exiles, together with Johan Daly, who did the Baltic Pavilion with some of you, uh, Seem, who was in a Craiglin studio, and there was eight of us uh, who left from Estonia to study in Vienna, and only four of us returned, but those, those four are rather <laughs> active now. Um, and so we have curated a lot of exhibitions to to tackle the, the topics of what is out there, what are the materials, what are the methods of uh, constructing and what kind of special qualities it creates. And uh, also we initiated with the, with the first uh, Italian Architecture Penale Pavilion 2015 was our self-initiated because we saw that every time we did an exhibition it only remained inside of the walls of the building but architecture should can't be hidden inside of the museums. So we proposed the museum, like, hey, what if we would do our structure in front of the house? Um, it gained a lot of good feedback, and the industry was super interested. Like, if we could start using this as a prototypical method of uh, finding uh, new, new ways of constructing with wood, so combining emerging young architects internationally international uh, young architects and then uh, local industry, like maybe we could bring back, uh, maybe we can bring back wood into urban environment. And in that sense, it was uh, definitely fruitful because it's in the most visible uh, spot 
um, in, uh, in Tallinn, close to the harbor in front of the Architecture Museum. Um, and yeah, Biennale is still ongoing for another week, um, but uh, the steampunk, that's the final one, was uh, just opened a month ago. Of course, we a right lot of articles, um, and aside that, we also are a part of um, a lot of uh, research projects and, and books that uh, needs to be published in order to discuss those uh, efforts that we are um, making towards, um, towards this new construction method, but also uh, James. Okay, that's James changed this slide. Um, James Taylor Foster was also part of the lecture series last year, but I didn't put the poster up, so now that's there. Um, but I'm also curating with uh, Johan Dali, um, Estonian Academy of Arts lecture series, that uh, just last night we had um, Helena Matson um, discussing the, the archiving and the urbanism, and now we're um, taking and that's happening um, monthly, and we're having it open for everybody to join in. And that our own culture endowment is actually interested of, um, of supporting us in this process that has been ongoing for eight years now. Also, I've taken up challenges from the, the government, um, meaning that, for example, this one uh, was, um, Minister of Environment, before they started the competition, uh, they, I was in a discussion with them, like where and how and what should be the Ministry of Environment. And together with Katrin Gov, who's there as well, um, and, uh, and, and energy design professors, we were discussing, like maybe we can do a studio, like a vertical studio in school of playing it through beforehand and figuring out some solutions and proposals of what the Ministry of Environment could be. And, I mean, and then, uh, then inviting them for the reviews and, and building the brief from there. And we managed to bring in much more public uh, uh, square meters. Uh, we managed to locate it more in... Uh, uh, in, a, in a better location next to the Maritime Museum um, and, and of course deal with the fact that it has to be out of sustainable materials, uh, mostly timber, etc. So, um, and there are some uh, more studios we're running where we're really redefining the Corbusier's domino, like what are the elements and bits and pieces what the building is consisting of and can we start reducing them, can we start abstracting them and, and creating the systems where, where you don't uh, recognize the post and the beam anymore, but you have uh, a certain uh, system for uh, abstract space. So I think from the detail to the, to the overall, from the overall to the detail, this discussion has allowed us to to see architecture a bit differently and propose new tectonics and spatial qualities that, uh, that this kind of hermeneutic circle, this kind of approach can generate. So I will stop here. Thank you.